Yo, what up? Kenny here. Welcome to another episode of Fobology. In this video, we're looking at a very good match I had yesterday on Gordok Ross V5 as the Helo pilot. I call this a good match because this is right during our prime time hours, which is the evening hours, West Coast time. And there's a lot of regular players on both teams. I pretty much know and play regularly with most of the SLs on both teams. I'm going to take a second here to review the layer that we're playing, Gordok Ross V5. So on the screen, we're looking at squadlanes.com, reviewing Gordok Ross V5. Uh, this is a website made by Captain, who's a, another YouTuber, makes great content. I'll throw links to this website as well as his channel below. Gordok Ross V5 is one of those layers that has very little variation. There's no real lanes. It just selects out of two or three flags each step of the way, as you can see on the screen. One easy way to remember this layer is simply by the Russian main location being in the northwest corner, which is actually the dairy farm flag as opposed to the northeast corner. In a good competitive match like this with two good experienced teams on a map like Gorok Ross V5 that's very linear, everybody's going to know where to go. Everybody's going to know where the midpoints are, they're going to know where the good areas are to rush, they're going to know how to counter rush, all that shit is going to be known on both sides. Alright, so let's get into it. Out the rip, I'm flying out the 9A boys to go for the rush on Akeem, while other squads are working on the back caps and pushing the midpoint. Alright, I talked to him about it. Sir Hilo. Man, it's weird coming back to Sir Hilo. He's, uh, he's already on up or north of us. North of us. Yeah. They already dropped off. So here you can see, sure as shit, the other team uh, is aware of the Akeem rush. They were prepared for it. They are essentially counter rushing by taking a helo here right out the rip. So the 9A boys do get their fob built and have a good scrap for a little bit. However, the counter rush does prevail and they eventually kill our fob, uh, successfully capping Akeem, resetting us back at base. Meanwhile, things are looking pretty good on the midpoints because Squad 5 has successfully built the fob on Neva lower while. Squad 6 is sneaking a Lodgy into Radio Tower with some assistance uh, from our Strikers and they're about to build a fob on Radio Tower which covers the midpoints very nicely. Like I said, the other team is very good as well, so they're working on building fobs near the mid caps and things are going to get real spicy before it's all said and done. So like I said, things are getting spicy on the mid caps. Uh, the guys on Neva Lower got overrun, they're losing their fob, there's armor all over Radio Tower. So Command Squad and Squad 10 are prepared to defend Fortified Farmstead if it doesn't go our way and it goes Neva Lower for example. The 9A guys got overrun on their rush to Akeem, so they're back at base in the Hilo and we're discussing where to take them next. The cap on Fortified Farmstead is about to finish up, so me and the 9A guys are hovering in the Neva lower area in the event that it goes to that cap instead of Radio Tower, in which case we'll be attacking Neva lower. Neva lower. There it goes. 
Alright, give us. Uh, that could have gone better. Uh, mirror? How many are I can hear two bubble guns. Strike three minutes of airstrike in the scout gun. This works. The nine A boys I just dropped off west of Neva Lower on their way attacking. Uh, meanwhile, I'm making a supply run to fortified farmstead so command squad can rearm his lodgy and be prepared to leapfrog or build more fobs for Neva Lower if need be. While I'm making this run, I'm keeping a close eye on squad eight as they push into Neva Lower because I know that they're going to need to build a fob right on the flag very soon because an enemy helo saw us land on the west side and build the first attack fob. So I expect that the enemy is going to overrun that fob very soon. Alright, so Neva Lower turns into a wild and crazy sketchy as fuck gunfight for quite a bit. Uh, we do end up building the backup fob on the south side while Squad 10 is uh, beginning their push on Akeem. Here I'm just making a supply run to the southern backup fob on Neva Lower so Command Squad can reload his Lodgy. This is probably the point in the match where our team starts to pick up some serious momentum and pace. Can you still up? Recognizing the success that Squad 10 is having on Akeem Central, Squad 8 requests that I pick them up at May so we can fly out to the next cap. Recognizing and reacting during these key moments are really the trick for experienced players to keep their pace, momentum, and pressure on the enemy. Yeah, he's building right now. He's trying, he's trying. What we got going on here? You won't fucking ram him. So the last flag is 100% fruit farm, as you saw earlier, there's no other options, that's why Command Squad is building their attack already. 
Uh, meanwhile, I'm just going to pick up a few stragglers from the Neva lower cap and uh, move them to Fruit Farm. Okay. So in the end, this kind of looks like a roll as we're pushing their last flag fruit farm by the end of the match. However, I would say it was a good match because we did have some good back and forth plays on the mid cap. We had a rush that was countered even better. Uh, this is just sort of a typical outcome of good teams where when one team starts to build up some momentum, they're able to apply an extreme pace that just gets them to the end. So anyway, that's it for me. Thanks for watching.